You're watching the Physics Classroom's video tutorial series on Newton's Laws. The topic of this video is determining an individual force value. Here's the question we wish to answer. How can you use Newton's second law to determine the value of an individual force if you know values of mass, acceleration, and information about the other forces? Let's get started. Understanding this video relies upon an understanding of other critical concepts introduced in earlier videos, such as net force, mass versus weight, free body diagrams, the concept of friction, and of course, Newton's second law. You'll find videos on all these topics in our video tutorial series. Now, Newton's second law suggests that when the individual forces acting on an object are not balanced, the object accelerates with an acceleration that is equal to F net divided by M. In this equation, the F net, the net is the net force. It refers to what you would get if you added up all the vec forces as vectors. For instance, if you look at this force diagram, the up and the down forces balance each other and add up to zeros when added as vectors. But the right and left forces don't balance, and when you add 36 newtons to the right to 24 newtons to the left, you end up with 12 newtons to the right. That's how you determine the net force. The mass refers to the quantity of stuff that's present in an object. It's measured in units of kilograms and can usually be calculated if we know the weight of the object. If we know the weight of the object and we divide it by g, 9.8 newtons per kilogram, we can get the mass of the object. The Newton's second law equation can be rearranged to F net equal MA. This equation informs us that if we know the values of M and A, we should be able to calculate the net force value. And if we know the net force value, we should be able to find the missing force value in any free body diagram, like the free body diagram we see here. So in order to find the missing force, what we need to first calculate is the net force. We know the value of A, but we don't know the value of M. But we can usually calculate the value of M if we know the force of gravity or weight of the object. We notice in the diagram that the down force, the force of gravity, is 29.4 newtons. If we divide that by 9.8 newtons per kilogram, we get 3 kilograms for the mass. Now that we know the mass and the acceleration, we can use our Newton's second law equation to calculate the net force. It comes out to be 12 newtons, and it's directed rightward. What this tells us is that if you added up all the forces, Forces, you'd end up with 12 newtons to the right. That is, the rightward force must be 12 newtons more than the leftward force. If that's the case, then the leftward force must be 24 newtons. In our first example, we wish to find all the blanks in the diagram. We know the values of M and A. If this were a word problem, it might be worded like this. A 62 kilogram skydiver is accelerating downward at 4.6 meters per second squared. Determine the air resistance force. Our solution involves find, using the values of M and A to first calculate the net force. When we do that, we get 285.2 newtons downwards. Now that we have the net force, let's find the gravity force. What we can do is we can take the value of M62 and multiply it by G or 9.8 newtons per kilogram and we end up getting the down force of 607.6 newtons. Now the net force being 285.2 newtons down tells us that the down force is 285.2 newtons more than the up force or that the up force is 285.2 newtons less than the down force. So by subtraction we can figure out the net force to be 322 newtons. Now in doing this we'll notice that the down force is bigger than the net force by an amount equal to the net force. In example two, we have a diagram with four forces and we know the rightward force. We also know the mass and acceleration and we wish to determine all the blanks. If this were a word problem, be worded like this. A rightward force of 373 newtons is applied to a 118 kilogram object to accelerate rightward at 1.24 meters per second squared. Determine the friction force. So in our solution, our first step is to use the values of M and the value of g, 9.8 newtons per kilogram, in order to calculate the f grab. And once we find the f grab, we know that the f norm balances it out, and so we now have two blanks in the diagram. Our second step involves using the values of m and a in order to calculate the net force. When we do, we get 146.32 newtons to the right. What this tells us is that the rightward force of 373 newtons is bigger than the leftward force by an amount of 146.32 newtons. So by subtraction, we can figure out the leftward force is 227 newtons. Now do a quick conceptual check. Make sure that the rightward force is bigger than the leftward force by an amount of 146 newtons. And it is. 
Our third example is a word problem. No diagram is given. Determine the tension force required to accelerate a 4.80 kilogram bucket upward out of a well at 0.825 meters per second squared. When you get a problem like this, be sure to draw a free body diagram. It will help you out a lot. Here we know there's two forces on the object, gravity, which is always present, and then we read of a tension force directed upward. So my diagram looks something like this. When I look at the problem, I also know the value of m and the value of a. One quick recognition you always have to make is that whenever you know the value of m and the value of a, you can calculate the net force. In this problem, that comes out to be 3.96 newtons upwards. You also can calculate the value of f-grab whenever you know the value of m. What you do is you multiply the 4.8 by the 9.8, and that gives you the f-grab force of 47.04 newtons. Now, knowing that the net force is 3.96 newtons up tells you that the up force must be 3.96 newtons greater than the down force. Now that we've calculated the down force, we can use addition to calculate the up force. It's 51.0 newtons. Now do a quick conceptual check and make sure that your up force is, is, is 3.96 newtons greater than the down force. Our fourth and final problem is also a word problem. A 525 newton rightward force is applied to accelerate a 65 kilogram object at 4.16 meters per second squared. Determine the coefficient of friction. Don't begin a problem like this without first drawing a free body diagram. In the problem, we recognize that there's an applied force to the right. There's also some friction force. It must be to the left. And of course, if there's friction, there'd have to be a surface that's rubbing across, so we have a normal force up and always a gravity force down. Our free body diagram looks something like this. We know the rightward force, its value is 525 newtons, and we also know the mass and acceleration. So our solution will continue while we notice that the, we have the value of m and a. So we can calculate the net force. It's 270.4 newtons to the right. This means that our rightward force is bigger than our leftward force by an amount of 270.4 newtons. So I can find the leftward force of friction by subtraction, 525 minus 270.4 is 254.6 newtons. Three more blanks. Now what I know is that the F friction is equal to mu times F norm. If I could know F norm, I could calculate the value of mu. But F norm is equal to F grab, which is also equal to mg. In other words, the vertical force is balance and the down force is gravity, so we can calculate it from knowledge of the mass. It's 637 newtons, and the normal force must balance it. So now that we know normal and friction, we can calculate the value of mu. If f fricked equal mu times f norm, then mu equal f fricked divided by f norm, or 254.6 divided by 637 newtons. That comes out to be just short a 0 .400. In this video, we've been solving for the individual force values if we know values of m and a. Here's the steps that we've been using. First and always, draw a free body diagram. Represent all the individual forces by four zeros and identify any forces that you know. You can go ahead and write it right in the diagram. Also identify the values of m and a. Now that you know the values of m and a, what you can do is you can calculate the net force. The net force tells you how much bigger one force is than the other force. So you can use that information in order to calculate the value of any unknown force. Now at this time in every video, I'd like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps to help you solidify the learning. But before I do, I was wondering if I could ask you to help us out. Could you give us a like or even subscribe to our channel, get notifications when new videos come out. And if you have a question and comment, leave it in the comment section down below. Okay, here's the action plan. First, at our website, we have a section called the calculator pad. And the calculator pad is the go-to place for problems. What you'll see is a problem, an answer, and an audio guided solution. You can check out questions 11 through 30 of our Newton's Laws section. They'd be great practice. Students love concept builders, and we have one just on this topic. It's called Solve It with F equal MA. You'll find that in the concept builder section. We have a link to it in the, in the description section down below. Third, we have a series of apps called Minds on Physics apps, and in the second app called app number two, has a three modules in it. And the, sec and the first module there is called the Newton's Laws module. Go to mission nine in L9. It's great practice on this topic. Finally, at our website, we have a tutorial. And one of the pages at our tutorial blends really well with this lesson. And you might want to use it as a reference. It's called Finding Individual Force Values. We have links to all these things down in the description section below this video. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck.